don't typically dive into the NFL a ton on this channel, but today I wanted to try something new, and we're going to go through the Dallas Cowboys 2021 draft class, talk about each player, grade the pick, and sort of give my reactions so you can get to know each guy, and what they'll bring to the table to the Cowboys this fall. This is definitely a new concept, and I hope it does well, and I hope you guys like it. So if you want me to do this for more teams, be sure to show your support by hitting that like button, and dropping a comment, and also letting me know which team I should do next. Subscribe if you love football content. Comment your thoughts, suggest another video topic, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's go ahead and get started and grade the 2021 Dallas Cowboys draft class. Not only are we going to talk about the guys who were drafted, but I think we should also take a look at some of the undrafted free agents of note. We're going to jump right into it and talk about the first guy they drafted, Micah Parsons. With J.C. Horn off the board, the Cowboys elected to go with the best defensive player available, and Parsons is a very talented and an extremely good player. Going back in time a little bit, Parsons was born in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. From there, he would transfer to Harrisburg High School, where he started at both defensive end and at running back, and he rushed for over 1,200 yards and 27 touchdowns, and also had 10 sacks on defense. He was an absolute athlete as he played basketball as well, and he was a five-star recruit, and at one point, the number four player in his class according to 24-7 Sports. He was recruited by Nebraska, Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Bama, and Penn State, and it had really come down to Ohio State and Penn State. Unfortunately, the Buckeyes were eliminated, as during a visit, college game day came to town, and Parsons took a picture with Kirk Herbstreit, which is apparently a violation of NCAA rules, as recruits are not allowed to have contact with members of the media associated with former student-athletes. As we know, Herbstreit ended up going to Ohio State back in the day, so the Buckeyes actually agreed to no longer recruit Parsons, and he ended up going to Penn State. When he got to college, James Franklin moved him to middle linebacker instead of defensive end, and he didn't exactly start a ton as a true freshman, as he only made one start, but he led the team in tackles with 82. He became the first freshman in Nittany Lion history to do that, and he did even better his sophomore year as he had 109 tackles, 5 sacks, 3 pass deflections, and 3 fumbles. He won the Linebacker of the Year award and was a consensus All-American. Going into the 2020 season, hype was unreal for him, but he decided to opt out of the season to preserve his draft eligibility, and he would be considered a big-time pick. He got drafted 12th overall by the Cowboys, and he's expected to be a really good player, and I give this an A+. Yes, he does kind of have some off-the-field issues, but I think he's grown up and matured, and he's going to add a lot of value to this organization. The second pick the Cowboys had was the 44th overall pick, where they selected a corner out of Kentucky by the name of Kelvin Joseph. Joseph grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and became a star athlete from a young age. He was actually high school teammates with Javante Smart, and in case you don't know who that is, he was a consensus four-star basketball player who went on to play for LSU. Joseph would actually follow suit as he committed to the Tigers, and he'd play a little bit as a freshman. He would elect to transfer and would have to sit out the 2019 season, and he chose the Kentucky Wildcats. Mark Stoops had a plan for him, and he did really well. He led the SEC in interceptions and was one of the best players on the defense, and combined that with his 4.34 speed and his 6-foot frame, he was one of the top corners in the draft. Many expected him to be a late first-round pick, but he slid to the mid-second round, and I think the Cowboys got a steal here, and I give it an A. With their next pick, they selected a defensive tackle with the 75th overall selection in Osa Odigizoa. It took me a little bit to learn how to say his name, but he's a very talented player, and he grew up in Portland, Oregon. He was actually an all-state wrestler. He won 131 wrestling matches in high school, so obviously he has strength and coordination, and he brought that to the nose tackle position in football. He ended up signing with UCLA, where he was a good player for a couple of years, and he definitely has the potential to fill out his frame and be a good player in the NFL, but as of right now, I just give it an average grade of a B. Nothing too amazing, but it also wasn't a bad pick either. With the Cowboys' fourth pick in the third round, they took Chauncey Golston, a defensive end from Iowa. Hailing from the state of Michigan, he went to East English Village Prep, where he became the 857th best recruit in the country and the 41st best defensive end in the class of 2016. After redshirting, he played four straight years for Iowa, where he was productive every single year and was seen as a guy who would be taken in the NFL draft. He was taken in the third round and definitely has potential to become a good player, but because of the other needs that the Cowboys had and some of the other defensive ends available, I give it a B- or a C+, plus, as I do think they could have done better, and at least gotten a more talented player at the position in the third round. With the 99th overall pick, the Cowboys took a cornerback from Oregon State by the name of Nashon Wright. Wright grew up in California and would eventually take his talents to Oregon State, but he was never really supposed to be anything. He had no stars by 24-7 sports and was not ranked in any sort of database. You may be familiar with the Wright family name though, as his little brother did play for Last Chance U in 2020. He started 12 games as a sophomore, and that's when he really started to become a thing, and in 2020, 
He started six games having 30 tackles with two picks and four passes deflected. And he definitely would have done a lot better had the full season have been played. Right now, most Cowboy fans were not happy as they call this a Dan Quinn pick. He was too lengthy and small and there are definitely other better options available, but he has a really high ceiling and they said he could be the next Richard Sherman or he could be a bust. Personally, I give it a B- because I love taking flyers on players like that, but in the eyes of many, it could become a waste of a pick. With the 115th overall pick, many say the Cowboys got the steal of day two as they drafted a linebacker by the name of Jabril Cox. We all know North Dakota State for producing Carson Wentz and most recently Trey Lance, but Jabril Cox was a really good linebacker for that program for years and he decided to take his talent to the FBS level and he signed with LSU last year. The LSU defense was a bear cupboard and Bo Pelini was a disaster so it kind of hurt Jabril's stock and he also fell a little bit on draft night. He's a player who has all the tools in the world to be a productive NFL linebacker and combine him with Micah Parsons, that could be the best rookie duo of linebackers of any team in the 2021 NFL Draft. I give this grade an A, and everyone else gives it an A as well. In the fourth round with the 138th overall pick, the Cowboys took another flyer on a player who kind of has some character issues. Josh Ball was a four-star recruit coming out of high school and originally took his talents to Florida State University. He played there and redshirted, and then he was suspended following his first year as he was charged with domestic violence. He ended up transferring to Butler Community College in El Dorado, Kansas, and from there he'd get another chance at the FBS level as he played for the Marshall Thundering Herd. He started eight games as a senior during the 2020 season and was a first team Conference USA selection. At 6'8 and over 300 pounds, he definitely has potential to grow into a good offensive lineman, but the off the field issues are a little bit worrisome, but it did seemingly happen four years ago and they gotta give him a chance and I think it was worth a flyer in the later rounds, but because of the potential character concerns and the level of competition he was playing at with Marshall, I give it a C+. At pick number 179, the Cowboys, in my opinion, got a steal in wide receiver Simi Fajoko. Coming out of high school, Fajoko was a four-star recruit and chose to take his talents to Stanford. David Shaw is not known for producing a ton of good wide receivers, but J.J. Arcega-Whiteside broke that mold, and Fajoko is the next one who was drafted. He's actually a first-team All-Pac-12 selection this past year, and no one really seems to talk about that. He also wins a blazing 4.3740 yard dash time and he had 37 catches for 574 yards and three touchdowns. He's a deep threat receiver, has good hands, and should be a good rotational piece. In my opinion, it was a good pick. I don't know if they necessarily needed a wide receiver, but for what they're getting and what he could become, I give it a B. At pick number 162, they grabbed their second defensive tackle of the draft in Quentin Bohanna. Bohanna's uncle played in the NFL back in the day, so football always ran in his blood, and he became a pretty big recruit in the state of Tennessee. He was given three stars and he committed to Kentucky and he's the teammate of the guy they drafted earlier, Kelvin Joseph, and he was a productive player through, throughout his time in Lexington. He has potential to blossom into a good defensive player, but right now he's a project, but he'll definitely have a shot to actually play and carve out a role for himself and I give this a B. At pick number 227, they got one of my favorite players in their draft class in Israel Mukwamu. He was a three-star recruit coming out of high school who actually originally signed with Florida State but would later flip to South Carolina. He rotated between corner and safety, and he became a star alongside J.C. Horn, who ended up being a top 10 pick. He was a second team All-SEC selection in 2019, and was off to a productive start in 2020 before he decided to opt out after Will Muschamp was fired. He's a tall athletic corner who will switch to safety, and if it does work out, it'll be a sixth round pick, but it's definitely a boomer bust type player, and I give it a B. With their final pick in the seventh round at number 238, they selected offensive lineman Matt Farniuk from Nebraska. His older brother actually played for Iowa State and for the Vikings back in the day, so football did run in the family's blood. Farniak was a four-star recruit coming out of high school and took his talents in Nebraska, where he'd have a solid role there over the past few years. He's a good run walker, is very strong, but doesn't seem to be very good at pass protection, which is definitely a big struggle, and he did not perform well against very quick edge rushers. He has the body to compete at the NFL level, but we'll see if he ever puts it all together, and for the seventh round, I'll give it a B-. I did want to quickly highlight some of my favorite undrafted free agents, and we're going to start with Brendan Knox. He played a lot as a true freshman for Marshall, and he was a 1,000-yard running back twice, and was even Conference USA's MVP. He helped the surgeons of Marshall football this past year, and definitely kind of disappointed to a degree, but still had 8 touchdowns and 900 yards rushing this year, and could be a guy who could sneak onto the roster if he has a really good camp, and he was definitely pretty good in college. Next up, we have Osiris Mitchell, who's a name that's been around Mississippi State for quite a while. He had the second biggest wingspan of any wide receiver in this draft. He's also very quick, but he definitely didn't have the production at Mississippi State that many would think, 
and the Cowboys always take a ton of undrafted free agent wide receivers, and I'm curious to see if he'll make the roster, but if you're an SEC football fan, you've heard this name for quite a while. Another wide receiver they just ended up taking was Brennan Eagles. He was a big time recruit coming out of high school and committed to the Texas Longhorns where he showed flash of becoming a college football superstar at times, but in my opinion, he, he left a year too early and he should not have put his name into the 2021 NFL Draft, but I guess he just wanted to get started now. The next wide receiver they signed was Brandon Smith from Iowa. In three years, he got 88 passes for 1,031 yards and nine touchdowns, but he struggled with drops, has poor tracking skills, and was kind of inconsistent running routes, and I just don't think he'll make the roster, to be honest. Finally, we get to the one guy who I really, really like, and I thought would be the steel wide receiver of the 2021 NFL Draft, and I was pumped to see that he went with the Cowboys. His name is TJ Vasher. He was a four-star recruit coming out of Texas, and he was a big name at Texas Tech, he had arguably the best catch of the 2018 college football season as he had a one-handed grab against Ole Miss. Throughout the next two years, he had over 1,000 yards receiving and 13 touchdowns, and this was only on 83 catches. Unfortunately, Matt Wells is not a very good coach. They didn't really have a good quarterback throwing him the ball, and he struggled with off-the-field issues. And this kind of shied teams away from him, but Vasher has all the athletic tools to make the roster and be good in the NFL. If he can clean up his act off the field and show the kind of potential he has, I think he can make the roster and actually play a lot as a rookie. Finally, the last undrafted free agent I want to talk about is Nick Eubanks, a tight end from Michigan. At 6'5 and 256 pounds, Nick Eubanks was a big time recruit coming out of high school and is definitely seen as a project, but he had a pretty solid role with the Michigan Wolverines over the past few years. But with Dalton Schultz and Jeremy Sprinkle being free agents after this year, I could see him making this roster and potentially being one of those tight ends that kind of comes out of nowhere, but more than likely, he's probably not going to do a whole lot. So yeah, I talked about all the Cowboys draft picks and my favorite undrafted free agents, and if you're a Cowboys football fan, let me know what you think of your draft, what you think of each player, and what undrafted free agents are going to ultimately make the roster. I'd love to know your thoughts, and if you want me to do more videos like this, we obviously have 31 more NFL teams to do, and I would gladly do videos for all of them if you guys want to see that. So be sure to let me know what they like and a comment, suggest what topic I could do next, and check out all of my other videos, including my video about the 2021 NFL quarterback draft class. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.